So am I completely doing something wrong here with the numerical approximation? Is there any commonalities I can find between the numerical solution and the analytical solution? Or is there any commonality between the <coughs> analytical rate of decay and the numerical rate of decay? Can somebody find uh, any analogy between this function, 2 times cosine 2 pi k delta x minus 1, this function, and uh, the analytical rate of decay, which is uh, what? Minus 2 pi k squared, right? Yes? Delta x goes to 0, I think. When delta x goes to 0, these two functions match? In what sense does this, I mean, it's a very good point. As delta x goes to 0, there is some relation between these two rate of decays, right? But what relation is it? Taylor series expansion, yes. The Taylor series expansion as delta x is very close to 0 actually matches up to the second order term, right? I mean, there is no coincidence that uh, we have a second order scheme and the Taylor series actually uh, matches. Let's write this down a little bit. So, so our W I numerical is equal to E to the minus, let's copy that again, oops, uh, minus 1 over delta x squared times 2 cosine 2 pi k delta x minus 1, right? times t, okay, of wi, while our w analytical, well, let's also write i because uh, at every point this is true, including at the grid points, right, is equal to e to the minus 2 pi k square t, <coughs> wai, uh, i, right. So they both goes exponential, and uh, the exponential rate of decay is uh, different. But if I look at the exponential rate of decay as a function of delta x, okay, as a function of delta x, uh, let's use uh, two colors to draw them. Uh, one is, let's say, this guy. Uh, oh, sorry, not, not as a function of delta x, sorry, but as a function of k. Uh, let's see, as a function of k. Sorry, well, I didn't mean to say when delta x is very small, but when when k times delta x is very small, okay, they match. So in particularly, if we fix a particular delta x and look at when k is relatively small, then the Taylor series actually would match. All right. So so if you look at k and uh, uh, the decay coefficient, decay. The red curve is just a quadratic function, right? You have just a quadratic. I'm not drawing quadratic very well, but uh, something like that. Okay. While, uh, let me draw it a little bit. Uh, uh, this is for the better drawing of my next function. My next function is uh, this guy. It's something that is uh, a cosine minus... Uh, that's a uh, well. Uh, okay, so, sorry. I, I put a minus sign here. I shouldn't because uh, uh, because there is no minus sign here. So so there is no minus sign here. So so this is the rate of decay, which means if I if I want to put a minus sign here, I would uh, have a plus here and minus here, right? So so what I'm looking at is the rate of decay, which is one minus a cosine function times two over delta x. What is one minus a cosine function? It's a function that looks like this, right? Right? That's 1 minus the cosine function. And uh, uh, what is here? What k is going to be here? Well, what, what the green curve is uh, 2 over delta x, 1 minus cosine of 2 pi k delta x. Right? So, so what is going to be here? It's going to be one over delta x, right? Okay. So what I'm see what I'm seeing is that uh, 
of course, the first thing I know is that when k is on the order of 1 over delta x, I'm not getting the rate of decay well at all, right? So for functions that are as oscillatory as the grid spacing, I'm not getting the solution correct at all. That's one thing. Another thing is that for k, that is much, much smaller than 1 over delta x. What we call is well-resolved frequencies. This, this is well-resolved frequencies. Okay? Am I doing that? Am I capturing the rate of decay well? So now let's uh, put an analysis. Is, uh, that means is 2 pi k square, uh, in some sense, approximate to 1 o I mean 2 over delta x, cosine of 2 pi k delta x, in some sense. Okay. Well, the answer is yes. Because if I do cosine, uh, no, no, minus 1. Yeah, uh, actually 1 minus this, not, not uh, uh, 1 minus cosine 2 pi k delta x, right? The answer is if you do Taylor series expansion to cosine, 2 pi k delta x, the Taylor series expansion only makes sense when k delta, k delta x is approximately equal to 1. And that's the place where you can actually confidently truncate the Taylor series. Otherwise, all the terms, uh, even very, very high order terms, may be important, right? If k times delta x is not very close to 0. So, so this is uh, approximately equal to, we are expanding it at k delta x close to, well, let's let's expand it uh, uh, when the whole thing is uh, 2 pi k delta x. Um, sorry, I erased uh, the previous one. So uh, at 0, so we are going to be expanding this at 0. So it's going to be equal to cosine of 0, right, plus 2 pi k delta x times cosine prime at 0, right? The derivative of cosine at 0 plus half of 2 pi k delta x square times the double derivative at 0 plus etc, right? Okay? So if you plug in the values, cosine 0 is equal to 1. Cosine prime of zero is equal to what? Zero, right? The derivative of the cosine function at zero is—I mean, the uh, cosine function is a is a, a even function, so derivative is actually zero. Now, how about the second derivative? It's minus one, right? It's minus cosine zero again, so we get minus now half of two pi k delta x squared. Okay. And then the rest of them is plus, let me just call it O uh, k delta x cube, right? Okay, now let's plug this into the Taylor series expansion. What we get is uh, uh, 1 minus cosine 2 pi k delta x is approximately equal to well, the 1 cancels, we get a half of 2 pi k delta x squared, right? And then if you multiply this by 2 over delta x, we get this cancelled. We have over delta x squared, we get 2 pi k squared. That's exactly that. Okay, so basically what we are seeing is that the analytical and numerical solution, they agree with each other for small small wave numbers for well-resolved frequencies. All right, so that's one good thing to know. Are right, any questions for this?